All right, now you're here on News 10, and Charles Iruka will be taking us through the sports stories. This is the ultimate redefined for men. Welcome to Sports News. It lists Roberta Vinci has caused a huge shock as she beat Serena Williams at the US Open to end the Americans' hopes of a calendar Grand Slam. Vinci, the world number 43 and playing her first Grand Slam semi-final, won 2-6-6-4-6-4 in New York. Serena had been two wins away from completing a clean sweep of all four majors in 2015. Vinci will play Flavia Panetta in an all-Italian final at Flushing Meadows tomorrow. Well, Flavia Panetta on her part defeated Romanian second seed Simona Halep 6-1, 6-3 to reach her first Grand Slam final. Panetta entered the contest as the clear underdog, but the 26th seed showed her experience and was not overwhelmed on the big stage, having reached at least the quarterfinals at Flushing Meadows in six of the last seven years. The 33-year-old Italian produced the stunning upset in just 59 minutes. And in the meantime, the first semi-final of the men's category, world number one Novak Djokovic and defending champion Marin Cilic is ongoing. The other game between 17-time Grand Slam winner Roger Federer and the Swiss compatriot Stan Wawrinka will begin immediately after the Djokovic-Cilic encounter. Well, organizers have confirmed that the 2015 Nigeria Cup will start on Saturday, September the 26th at the golf section of the Ikoi Club in Lagos. The week-long event will begin with the children's category on September the 26th, while September the 28th to the 30th will feature caddies, ladies and the professionals. This year's edition is termed the Seven Shades of Green. The Seven Shades of Green reflects the seven days of the tournament and celebration of Nigeria's independence. Chairman of the organizing committee, Mr. Larry Kalejae, said the winner of the tournament will get 3 million naira. In football, Chelsea manager Jose Mourinho has confirmed that goalkeeper Thibaut Coutoua requires knee surgery and will be out for quite a long time. The 23-year-old Belgium international damaged his medial ligaments during training on Wednesday. Mourinho confirmed the extent of the injury at his media briefing before Saturday's trip to Everton. Former Stoke goalkeeper Asmi Begovic will replace Kutua, having already stood in for the Belgian when he was sent off against Swansea on the opening day of the season. Now that uh, he will be out, he will be out for, uh, for some time. It's a big blow, but... Uh, We, you will not see me next week be speaking again about about Thibaut because I never do when a player is injured. Uh, his injury is injured. Uh, it's not easy to have the best goalkeeper in the world injured. It's not easy. But it's easy to have uh, one of the best goalkeepers in the world to play. And we have Begovic to play. And uh, he's very, very good. So I'm very sad. For Thibaut, I'm very sad for the team, obviously. But um, we have a top goalkeeper, and and Begovic will be in goal. Still looking on flustered as usual, but that's it on sports news, and it's back to Gimba with the rest of the news at ten. This is the ultimate redefined for men. The newly appointed secretary to the federal government, Ambassador Babacheri Lowell, has resumed work today. He has asked civil servants to put in their best to ensure the new government succeeds. He has also encouraged the government workers to remain honest. The new SGF earlier received briefings from permanent secretaries in general services and cabinet secretaries leading the various heads of departments and units under them. Everybody does work. That's all his responsibility. Now we don't have anything. Of necessity, we must focus on IGI. But we only task. 
Sorry, it's important. So you see the point? Yes, sir. You don't get money because you are not even paying your VAT. Others are not paying their VAT. Others are not paying their withholding tax. And uh, you notice that those money is going to the federation account, which therefore means that by us withholding our tax and our VAT, we are stealing from Lagos State, Ondo State, Katsina State. Isn't it? Isn't it not? So whether it is arrears or not, we want to pay. Secretary to the Federal Government, Ambassador Babachar Lawal. The chairman of the Doe State Election Petition Tribunal, Justice A.R. Azoemana, has adjourned till September the 14th hearing on the nation on the motion filed by Samson Osage of the All Progressives Congress APC seeking the cancellation of the results of the 2015 Edo South Senatorial District election where Senator Matthew of the People's Democratic Party was elected. The decision to adjourn the case was reached at the resumed sitting of the tribunal at the High Court, Sapele Road, in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Respondents, supporters, all seated inside the High Court, Sapele Road in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Hearing is about to commence as the Edo Elections Petitions Tribunal resumes sitting. <laughs> After the day's hearing on his petition, Honorable Samson Osage of the All Progressives Congress, APC, says the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is trying all it can to delay judgment. Well, uh, I think uh, the, the respondents are afraid of the truth. Uh, they don't want us to hear the matter on the merits. They are doing everything humanly possible to ensure that uh, this case is never heard on merit. I believe that uh, the tribunal will be firm. I haven't, I haven't ruled that is going to hear this matter on the merits. So we are waiting on the 14th. It is not over yet. We have 34 witnesses. They were all in court today. They are ready. And we will prove before this tribunal the type of irregularities, monumental, that took place during the election. And we are hopeful. We are hopeful we will get justice. In their reaction, the respondents expressed confidence in the integrity of the tribunal. We are still on the preliminary. And uh, this is consistent with uh, legal practice. And all preliminary issues will be settled before you go to the main issue. We are impressed with the team of lawyers that are representing uh, uh, Senator Matthew Orokide. And uh, we are going to come back at the next adjoined date for this matter. But I think so far, so good. Whatever decision of the tribunal, we abide by it. It's a very competent court. And of course, there is no way we can doubt the competence you know, of the jurists you know, that are educating on this matter. So I'm very fine. So that comes out, of course, you know, as a good citizen of this country, we abide by it. The court is supreme in this matter. With further hearing schedules for September the 14th, both parties have shown faith in the ability of the Edo Election Petitions Tribunal to deliver the right judgment. In stories outside our shores, at least 65 people have died after a crane collapsed on the Grand Mosque in the Muslim holy city of Mecca. More than 150 people were injured in the accident. However, it is not known what caused the accident, but images from the scene shows part of a huge red crane had crashed through the mosque's roof. This is an unfortunate development as Mecca is currently preparing for the annual Muslim Hajj pilgrimage. In other news, just when we thought things were starting to cool off in Burundi, now that they have accepted the presidential third-term reality of President Pierre Nkurunziza, disaster has struck again. Here's Cynthia with more. Well, thank you. That was indeed the case. But this time around, it was a rocket attack targeting the Army Chief of Staff in the person of General Prime Nyong Gabo. Thankfully, he survived, but the same cannot be said for four soldiers who were taken to hospital in a pickup truck. There is some conflict in the death toll as the Iwaku newspaper puts the toll at six, while other sources say four people died. Then, South Sudan's rebels have ratified a peace deal signed by President Salva Kiir and their leader, Riek Mashar, last month in another step towards ending a 20-month civil war. South Sudan's parliament unanimously ratified the deal on Thursday, though both the government and rebels have voiced lack of faith in the opposing side to implement the peace deal and accused each other of ceasefire violations. 
Finally, today makes it 14 years since the worst terrorist attack against the United States in history. It's a day which changed the face of terrorism to not just a local threat, but a global one. A series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Islamic terrorist group Al-Qaeda on the United States on the morning of Tuesday, September 11, 2001, left 2,996 people dead, including the hijackers. The attacks consisted of suicide attacks used to target symbolic U.S. landmarks. Memorials have been held in various parts of the country and around the globe. That's the foreign news wrap up. It's back to you, Gimba. Many thanks indeed. On entertainment news tonight, Hollywood actor Danny Glover speaks on how Nollywood can get to the next level. Here's Maya Walgundele with details and other entertainment stories. <laughs> Well, thank you very much on entertainment news tonight. Hollywood actor Danny Glover has advised that the Nigerian film industry needs to truly define its focus before it can move to the next level. The leather weapon actor who is making his Nollywood debut on Steve Goka's film, 93 Days, says Nollywood has to find a balance between being entertaining and telling proper stories with political, cultural, and social consciousness. Now it's about how do we reconstitute our culture, our images of ourselves, and a nation. So that's one aspect of film, you know, in a sense. And it takes on that. And that's, that, that is definitely political. It's definitely a, 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 a social and et cetera like that. Nigerian music stars David O, Yemi Alade, as well as their African counterparts, AKA and Diamond Platinums, are up against each other as they have been nominated for the 2015 MTV EMA Best African Act Award. And Kenyan actor Peter King, who is currently on set of Kunle Afolayo's new Pan-African film, CEO, has expressed his delight at being in a Nigerian film. The actor, who had been on several international films, including in Belgium, said Nollywood films are screen delights in Kenya, and he had always wanted to be in one. Kenyans believe Nollywood is theirs. I mean, we watch Niger movies all day. I've always had this secret desire to do a Nollywood film. I never quite got the chance. So when I got the call from Kunle, I figured this is it. On the music front, Capitol Hill Goretti Company act Miss Kiz has a new track, Stupid, featuring Falls, while dance all star Timaya has a video for his song, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Five star music act Casey has an instructive dance video for his song, Al Qaeda. And that wraps it up on entertainment news. Let's head back to the main news. And the main news again. Suspected terrorists have infiltrated an internally displaced persons camp in Adamawa State, killing seven people. A bomb planted by the terrorists in the camp warehouse exploded killing the people, including officials of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Governors of the northern states have met in Kaduna in the northwest and resolved to clear outstanding workers' salaries. During the four-hour meeting, the governors also discussed insurgency and the need for peace to prevail. An unseated Italian Roberta Vinci has upset world number one Serena Williams in the semi-finals of the US Open, ending her dream of winning a calendar Grand Slam. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I am Gimba Umar. From all of us, have a splendid night, guys. Good night.